Hey everyone, so as you can see from the title of this video, I'll be explaining my life story of how I was able to graduate with a master's degree in engineering at the age of 23. Right now, I am not 23, that was over like 5 years ago. Currently I'm 28 and I feel a bit old saying that since it's been what seems like forever since I was in school. I feel that this might be a bit show off -y since it seems that graduating college at a certain age that is younger than the norm feels exceptional or anything but average. Honestly, I'm not sure even if 23 is considered a young age for graduating from graduate school. Graduating anywhere within your 20s is considered normal, at least to me. Even at the workforce, if you're like anywhere within your 20s working, you're considered like a baby or just you know young and inexperienced. But anyway, here in the US, I'm just following the traditional route of going from high school to undergraduate college and then graduate school. For my personal story, I didn't have any gap years where I took a break from school. I didn't get sick where I had to like stop school for a few months or a year, so I'm very fortunate in that. But I also wasn't smart enough to like skip any grades. Again, this is just my personal experience. I'm sure some of you guys out there watching might have different circumstances that are happening in your life. You may be supporting a family, you know, have health conditions, or just aren't fortunate or privileged in that kind of way that allows you to just focus on studying and finishing school as fast as you can. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start off with my high school. Starting in ninth grade, I think I was 15 at the time, I did what average freshmen in high school people will do. Just survive high school, keep up with my grades, and try out some extracurricular activity. I joined my high school baseball team at the time. I didn't take any AP classes since they weren't offered to freshmen yet. They were mostly just offered to like 10th graders and 12th graders. I was also part of this Vietnamese martial arts program outside of my school. So that kept me busy on top of just regular high school. Honestly, there wasn't much happening that year that could accelerate my progress towards graduating college any quicker, besides just starting to accumulate extracurricular activities that I could add to my undergraduate college application for the future. Next up is 10th grade. So I was 16 at that time. Uh, during 10th grade, I joined my high school football team. Oh, also just a disclaimer, I was not good in any sports that involved like a ball. So I was basically a bench warmer my whole entire high school. I mainly joined these sports so I can just include these as extracurricular activity on my college application. No one has to know if you're like any good at sports, so long as you join, right? During this year, I took AP Calculus AB and AP English Language or Composition. I passed those tests and those really helped me save me time and increase the amount of incoming college units so I wouldn't have to take these classes while I was in undergraduate college. Next up is 10th grade. Now I'm 17 at that time. I joined my high school football team again. So this is my second year playing American football. I built a good relationship with those guys there and it was definitely a fun time. Even if I wasn't good at it, the guys there made everyone feel welcome and everyone was like family, no matter how bad you were. So long as you put in the dedication, they were really awesome. For the classes, I took AP Calculus BC and AP US History during this year and I passed those tests too. So I highly recommend that you take as many AP classes as you can during high school that you can reasonably pass in order to save time and get ahead while an undergraduate. Emphasis on reasonably pass because you don't want to stress and overload yourself taking classes that you can't handle. In the end, passing these AP exams in high school is probably how I was able to save about like half a year during undergrad. Finally, I'm in 12th grade in high school. I was 18 by the time I graduated high school. This time, my senior year, I joined wrestling as my final year in sports. And that was honestly the most fun and the best sport I tried out for. It was the first year of wrestling, so we didn't have much experience coaching and teaching, but I would say it was like the best first time of the sport in my high school. Next, I took AP Studio Art, or AP Photography, that's what I called it, AP Statistics, and AP English Literature. Unfortunately, I only passed AP Studio Art, which made no sense to me. I thought I did pretty well in AP Stats and AP Literature, but I, you know, I guess not, I just failed it. Even so, I had a lot of fun in my last year of high school, so I don't regret it. Now we move on to undergraduate college. Because of the AP exams I passed during my high school, I entered my first year of undergraduate with 32 college units. That was about two quarters worth of completed classes. Just a side note, my university used the three quarter per academic year instead of the two semester system. Without going into full details of my undergraduate years and like going over every single class that I took each quarter of the year, I'll just summarize and say that I was able to take on average only three classes or 12 units every quarter of almost every single year during my undergraduate college. So I entered undergraduate college at the age of 18, majoring in chemistry, and I stuck with it, and I graduated undergraduate college at the age of 22, still majoring in chemistry. I took 
four years and I only had to take on average three classes each quarter. I did not have to take summer school. I only took fall, winter, and spring classes and took the summer off just working a summer job or staying at home. Some classes like chemistry or biology included labs too, so it was still time consuming each quarter with lecture taking one hour and labs taking three to four hours. That lecture and lab combination was four or five units with lectures being four units and labs, even though they took like three or four hours, was only one unit. Finally, I graduated undergraduate college and got accepted into a master's program in environmental engineering. I entered my master's program the fall quarter right after graduating from undergraduate. So I graduated in June 2016 during the spring quarter and entered my master's program on September 2016 for the fall quarter. I didn't have much of a break from studying. I felt just like another academic year rolling in after I graduated from college. Now let's talk about graduate school. Each graduate school will be different. Some require you to write a master's thesis and that could take two full years while others might have some other alternative route to graduate. My graduate program offered two routes to graduate. The first option was a traditional master's thesis which would take two years because you had to take the required classes, do research, and write a thesis. For this route, it's not like it has to take two years only. It could be shorter if you're able to squeeze in as many classes as possible or just like don't sleep and focus entirely on writing and researching. Or it could take longer if you wanted to take your time and prolong the classes or researching. It's just not the preferred method to make it longer than two years because you'll end up paying more for tuition and who wants that, right? The other route to graduating from my master's was just to pass with 45 units worth of graduate classes. Since my university follows a quarter system, you could technically graduate in one year or less if you manage to take four or more classes each quarter. Remember that each lecture course is equivalent to four units. So if you do the math, four classes in one quarter is 16 units. Doing that three times for the year for fall, winter, and spring would give you 48 units by the end of spring. There were some people in my program who managed to do that, but I ended up failing one class of my first quarter and having to retake an extra class, so I stayed one extra quarter. In the end, I took a total of four quarters to graduate from my master's program and ended up graduating with 55 units. I know it was a bit of overkill considering you only needed like 45 units to pass, but I wanted to be sure that I did graduate in case I ever failed another class. By the time I graduated during the fall, I was 23 because my birthday is after the fall quarter. Oh, and by the way, it's in April if you're ever curious and want to wish me a happy birthday. That's my story on how I was able to graduate with a master's degree in environmental engineering at the age of 23. It's not really a badge of honor to show how fast you can graduate, it's what you do with the time saved and whether or not you'll use that degree. Again, I know everyone watching will have different circumstances going on in their life and it's not a race to see who can graduate as fast as they can. Although I did want to graduate as quickly as possible so as to not waste time, pay more than necessary for tuition and just you know enter the workforce, it'll be different for your case and for your goals. Just know that there are a lot more successful people who are much older and may be entering college for the first time. Again, age doesn't matter when you graduate as so long as you do what you love use your degree or use what you learned on your journey towards obtaining that degree, that makes it count. So for the older audience there who are beyond their 20s, maybe this story will motivate you to go back to college if you're much older and think that a college degree will benefit you. Maybe it's your life goal before you die to get a college degree. I've seen that happen. And for the younger audiences out there watching, my journey could be the route that you may want to follow. That way you can just hit the workforce hard and running while you're still young. It's definitely beneficial to learn and try out new things while you're still young because you can afford the time and money to make it back. You should definitely take advantage of this while you still can. All right, that's all I have for the video. Thanks for watching until the end. Leave a comment and let me know when did you graduate and how long did it take you if you did go to college. All right, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.